Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So this is actually a bunch of different shaders that can all be created with the same nodes and with just some minor numerical differences between the different values, you know. So I'm just going to talk about all of them right now, quickly. Let's go. The first thing I want you to look at over here is the subsurface scattering over here. Um, the subsurface scattering actually determines how far light can penetrate and bounce off of, you know, the insides of the object. So red is really porous and if you shine like a really bright light behind it, some of that will get through from like the edges and whatnot, you know. So that's why by default red does have, subs have some subsurface. and the evidence of this is like if you go to zero then it just looks like a rock you know but it's not it's really soft and it's really porous just like our skin you know and then if you actually turn it up it starts looking more like you know a glazed wet donut and whatnot anyway let's move on to the next bit over here which is the color ramp the color ramp actually determines the you know color of our donut over here and what you can do is like I don't want to change these colors right now so the colors will be changing with this uh, hue saturation thing and that literally will just change the color of the donut itself it's like someone actually mixed in food coloring and whatnot you know and let's just remove that and go back to our default one uh, what you can do is if you want your donuts to be a bit burned or if you want them to look burned you can just you know darken either one of these edges and I believe if you darken this one it'll have a much better look yes there we go it looks a lot more crispy it looks a lot more burnt um, you will need to lower the subsurface scattering over here a little bit as well and maybe change the color too so definitely play with that now this does not look like an appetizing donut at all all right and that is sort of the point is it not anyway so let's go to the actual texture bits and over here it's really simple so i am using the object's uh, own texture coordinates over here you can use a uv if you want to um let me actually show you what that would do so this is just a torus it's nothing special so the uv what that's causing is like these stretching on the edges which actually kind of looks realistic as well a little bit because if you have ever cooked donuts you know like it stretches out from the center like it obviously expands a little bit so the outer edges do get stretched out a little bit anyway let's move in a little bit i'm just going to use the same vector into the noise texture and the noise texture settings over here are what determines you know most of the things that are happening in this scene and then feed that into the vector of the Voronoi texture. So that kind of determines like where the Voronoi and things are taking place and where they're not taking place and whatnot. Um, and let's move over here and play with these things as well. So what the noise texture is actually doing is it's determining how much of this random, you know, smudges are on the donut. So if I just move it up to say 15, as you can see it causes a lot of different smudges and it looks like the pattern is repeating it's actually not repeating but it looks like it is repeating so we're just going to go back to five if i lower it too much then the smudges they get really large and that is kind of an aesthetic that you might want in your scene in that case definitely play with this unfortunately you can't really lower the detail without it looking like a mess and yeah, that's pretty much it for this bit. There is some randomness to play with though. So what the randomness does is it's basically deepening or, you know, uh, it's basically deepening the smudges, you know. Uh, let's look at it from this thing. One second. So what the randomness does is it's basically making the smudges less or more extreme. And as you can see, like, they're really small ones over here now. And at the extremes, they're, like relatively larger and yeah we're going to use 3d f1 and euclidean for the voronoi texture just the standard 3d texture for the noise as always if you want some variation then you can use the w and not to mention that you can also use object info so like the random and plug that into the into the w and that will change the texture between both of these if it doesn't change it by enough, then what you can do is you can just add a math node over here, multiply it with like some really large number, and that will change it by enough, like 
the only thing that this is doing is it's just changing the what's it called the texture a little bit like it's just moving it along not anything else so yeah this will just change the texture between both of the two donuts anyway thanks for watching and if you like this then you know let me know i'm gonna be making a lot of other videos i'm gonna be doing a lot of other textures as well so let me know if there's anything else or anything specific that you want me to work on thank you for watching and goodbye